Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is introduce you to probability tree diagrams. They're excellent ways of calculating and simplifying combinations of probabilities. And one of the things that I really want to stress in this video is notation. Especially when you get to doing advanced questions, you really do need to put in correct notation. So let's start off with a typical question that combines probabilities. What we've got here is a bag that contains five red sweets and three blue sweets. Two sweets are drawn at random. And in case one, we do it with replacement. And in part two, we do it without replacement. And what I'm going to show you is how we would draw a tree diagram to represent the probabilities in each case. So for case one, with replacement, okay, if we're doing with replacement, what happens is that we set up two sections because we're pulling out two suites. So what I would encourage you to do is to draw your two sections. They're often called trials. Right? You don't have to draw a dotted line. I do, but uh, I would certainly encourage you to draw two sections like that. Now the first section is going to be all about drawing our first suite. What kind of suite it's going to be. And then in the second section, we're going to have the second sweep. Now what can happen when we take our first sweep? We can either get a red sweep or a blue sweep. There's two outcomes, as we say. And we illustrate that by drawing the two lines. If there was a third sweep, like a yellow sweep, then I could have either a red, yellow or or a blue suite. I'd draw three lines. Now, when we've taken our first suite, okay, it's important to put the probabilities on each of these branches. So we've got taking a red suite. So I would label that as the probability, P for probability then, of taking a red suite. So what's it going to be? Well, it'll be five out of eight suites, five eighths. And the probability of drawing a blue suite, well, that's going to be 3 out of 8 suites. And notice how the two branches total one whole one, 8 eighths in this case. And that's always the case, okay? On any section, your branches should total one. Okay, so this was the first suite. Now, suppose we had picked a red suite. What could happen next? Well, we could go on to pick another suite, which could either be a red or a blue suite. So we have two outcomes here. Similarly, if we took a blue suite, first of all, we could go on to take either a red suite or a blue suite. So we have our two outcomes listed there. We need to put these probabilities in. So here we have the probability of taking a red suite again is going to be exactly the same because we replace the suite. So it's going to be 5 out of 8. Probability of picking a blue suite. That's going to be the same as it was before because we replaced it back in the bag. 3 out of 8. If we're taking the blue suite first, we could go on to take a red or a blue. The probability of taking a red suite is still going to be 5 out of 8. And the probability of a blue suite, that's still going to be exactly the same as it was before, 3 out of 8. OK, well that's a typical tree diagram for something like this. Now what about the case when we do without replacement? Well, it's going to be basically the same tree diagram. First suite, second suite as our labels. And we can take a red suite first of all. That's going to be 5 eighths. And we could take a blue suite with a probability 
of 3 8 but this is where we've got to now be careful because we've got without replacement if we took a red sweep first there's going to be four sweets four red sweets that is in the bag and there'll be only seven sweets in total so the probability of taking a red sweet this time is going to be four sevenths now what I would encourage you to do is not just write probability of red equals four sevenths because that contradicts this statement what we should do is change the notation we should introduce this line here it's called conditional probability it means the probability of taking a red sweet given that I've just taken a red sweet and that is now 4 out of 7 this probability the probability of taking a blue sweet given that I've just taken a red sweet must be 3 out of 7 I've got 3 blue sweets in the bag if I took a red but there'll be 7 sweets left over and notice how this adds up to 1 4 sevenths and 3 sevenths is 7 sevenths one whole one now suppose I took a blue first well then I can go on to take a red sweet but it'll be the probability of taking a red sweet given that I've just taken a blue sweet well if I took a blue sweet there'll be seven sweets in the bag but there'll still be five red sweets left so it'll be five out of seven when it comes to working out the probability of taking a blue sweet given that I just previously took a blue sweet well there must have been two blue sweets in the bag out of seven two out of seven two sevenths and again check out these two five sevenths and two sevenths make seven sevenths one whole one okay so it's important to put this conditional probability in in cases like this where these probabilities depend on the previous probability when they don't depend on the previous probability as in this case these events are called independent events but when a probability does depend on a previous probability they're called dependent events okay well I've got another example that I'd like you to possibly just draw the tree diagram for and insert the probabilities here's the question now what we've got here is that Susan has the option of taking one of three routes to work A, B or C and the probability of taking route A is 35% and route B is 25% the probability of being late for work if she goes by route A is 10% and similarly by route B is 5% and route C is 2% and what I want you to do is draw a tree diagram to illustrate these probabilities okay have a go and just pause the video come back when ready and see if you've got the same solution as I've got okay well let's see how you got on well first of all you need to draw a tree diagram label your trials here okay and I've labeled the first one as the route that she takes and there's three routes here and I've labeled this trial through here lateness she's either late for work or not late for work so you need to fill in the probabilities of taking the various routes so hopefully you've put in the probabilities something like this and I gave them in percentages and you could have left them in percentages if you want to but I would encourage you to write them as decimals purely because you'll be doing calculations later on and it'd be easier to work just in the decimals also remember that I that these branches must total one whole one and I left out C here on purpose just so that you'd remember that fact and we now have the probabilities of either being late 
or not late and it's dependent on the route so we've got conditional probabilities here so hopefully I'd like to think you've put the conditional probabilities in we've got here the probability of being late given that you took route A we were told was 10% which I've written as 0.1 and we've got this little dash here this is the probability of not being late given that you took route A so you can have a dash there some people put a little bar over the top okay look something like this it still means not being late okay but I'm going to go for a little dash to the side here probability of not being late given A 0.9 90% remember this pair should add up to one whole one similarly if you take route B the probability of being late given that you took route B is 0.05 probability of not being late given that you took route B would be 0.95 and similarly for route C okay well I hope you got that one now here's another tree diagram totally different now in this example we've got a normal six-sided fair die is thrown until a six is scored and then no th more throws are made the process continues up to a maximum of three throws draw a tree diagram to illustrate the probabilities so again pause the video see what you come up with okay let's see how you got on well with this tree diagram it looks totally different to the ones before it should look something like this I've got my labels here first throw second throw third throw in the three trials but you'll notice now that when we have our first throw you either get a six or you don't get a six and if you do get a six you just stop you throw the die a second go you either get a six or you don't get a six and so on up to three throws so we need to put the probabilities on so you should have something like this now I've got the probability of six is one sixth the probability of not a six is going to be five sixths but when it comes to these probabilities these are independent they don't depend on the previous throw okay so I don't need to write the probability of throwing a six given that I just threw a six it would still be one sixth but it's silly because as I say that this probability is unaffected by what went before it so we have what is called an independent event so just leave it like that okay well I hope that's given you some idea of how to draw tree diagrams put the probabilities on and in my next tutorial what I'm going to show you is how we can work out particular probabilities like for instance in an example like this the probability of not throwing a six at all in the three throws okay well that brings us to the end for now and uh, as I say, hope you'll carry on and look at the other tutorials on probability.